it, it's less than half of what Ben Wallace was pushing for. But we must remember that it is at the same time a lot more than the 700 million extra that was due to be spent over the next two years mm. under the previous um, agreement in, in 2020. So it, it is a significant uplift, but whether or not it's enough um, is, uh, is something that's contested by many parts of the defence community. Yes. The government says it's putting £5 billion more into defence over the next two years. The plan is to increase defence spending up to 2.5% of GDP. But when that will happen is not clear. Lucy Fisher is t- Times Radio's chief political commentator. So just, uh, Lucy, just talk us through what's going to happen today. Well, as, Mer, um, as you mentioned, there's going to be this uplift in defence spending. But another key plank of what's happening today is that the government is going to publish the reworked integrated review. So if we cast our minds back to uh, 2021, there was this big um, strategic defence and security review, the most far reaching since the end of the Cold War that was published. Now, Liz Truss asked for that to be reopened because she wasn't happy with how it um, framed the UK's position on China. She took a more hawkish, uh, hawkish position and wanted that to be toughened up. Interestingly, uh, today, uh, Rishi Sunak has has sort of stepped back from being quite so uh, hawkish. He isn't going to go so far uh, as calling China a threat. But one of the key um, new um, planks of the um, IR republished is going to be a public-facing arm of MI5, a new national protective security authority that will help businesses, other public sector organisations with dealing with espionage from the likes of Beijing and Moscow. Mm -hmm. And this recalls a move by GCHQ back in 2016 when they launched the National Cyber Security Centre, which is their public facing arm that helps with um, cyber security for for businesses uh, and other organisations. How do you think these figures will go down with everyone, um, uh, Lucy? Five billion pounds uh, over the next two years in specific areas. We we had Richard Dannett on and he said, well, it's, you know, it's clearly not enough and, and no one who works in any form as a military analyst, analyst believes that it is enough? No, I think it's going to receive quite a lot of criticism. Uh, Tobias Elwood, the Tory chairman of the Defence Select Committee, has said that it will be celebrated in Moscow and Beijing. Uh, he says it's just, you know, falls far short of what's needed as we head into an increasingly volatile and unpredictable decade. John Healy, Labour's Shadow Defence Secretary, has said that the government is failing to secure Britain's national defence for the future. And he says it not only fails to deal with the UK's current capability gaps, but it undermines our place in NATO and our contributions uh, to the North uh, Atlantic um, Treaty. So um, I think there's going to be a a lot of um, griping today that it falls, you know, it's less than half of what Ben Wallace was pushing for. But we must remember that it is at the same time a lot more than the 700 million extra that was due to be spent over the next two years Mm. under the previous um, agreement in in 2020. So it it is a significant uplift, but whether or not it's enough um, is uh, is something that's contested by many parts of the defence community. Yes. Lucy, thank you for that. That's Lucy Fisher, Times Radio's Chief Fisher's Times Radio's Chief Political Commentator was listening to that. Morning, Lucy. Morning, Steve. So a third of what we need is, is going to be made available, according to, to, to Richard Dannett. What's the politics of this, uh, Lucy? Because uh, there might be a bit more headroom coming in the budget. Is it seen as a good thing to not spend it all on the military? But where, what sort of pressure has Hunt and Sunak been under on this? Well, look, I think uh, Hunt has realised that there is a need to uh, replenish uh, the munition stocks, given all the material donated to Ukraine. Uh, that includes not just sort of things like anti-tank weapons uh, and munition, but of course, 14 Challenger tanks uh, themselves uh, being de- donated to Kiev. But that said, it's not necessarily a very retail offer when it comes to the public who are worried about their energy bills. We know that Jeremy Hunt is going to have to spend uh, three billion pounds extending the energy price guarantee for an extra three months. Um, There's pressure from backbenchers to keep fuel duty frozen and retain the 5p discount on petrol and diesel, which we think he's also going to do. And there's lots of pressure in terms of reforms to uh, pensions um, for older voters and to um, childcare for parents of very young children. So it's one of um, a range of demands on the Treasury. And I think the Treasury also recognises that there's a great degree of waste when it comes to the Ministry of Defence. Programmes like the Ajax Infantry Fighting Vehicle, where five billion has been spent, and this is a a, a vehicle that's not yet fielded on the ground. Um, Junior, Dr Strike today, um, which may remind us that uh, public spending has all sorts of claimants, as you were saying. Um, um, Presumably, 
paying doctors uh, might be one of them. Well, that's right. And, you know, in recent weeks, we've heard, um, you know, brighter mood music when it comes to uh, the government resolving the pay disputes with nurses, with ambulance workers, with physiotherapists. But of course, the junior doctors going out on strike for three days um, as of uh, 30 minutes ago, um, you know, it, it is, is, a, is, is a sort of more difficult uh, pay dispute where there seems to be far less progress made. And I think that also shines a light on the fact that, you know, this is going to be a really big week of industrial action. Uh, I think up to half a million workers going out on strike, including 100,000 civil servants on budget day on Wednesday. There really are a lot of challenges um, facing the government and the Treasury as, as Jeremy Hunt prepares to stand at the dispatch, dispatch box in the middle of this week. And presumably he just just one, he, 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 that'll be the context for what he says, but he, the budget can't be there to, to, to address the concerns of all these strikers. Can't, that, that, that'll be dealt with separately. That will be dealt with separately, that's right. Yeah, and we'll see what happens over the course of the week. Um, really interesting stuff, as ever. Lucy Fisher is uh, Times Radio's chief political commentator. Didn't ask her about the orange wine. I forgot about the orange wine. Lucy, are you still there? Is she still there? <laughs> She's still there. <laughs> Explain the orange wine thing, because I'm still confused by it. I, I've, I've told the story already that we were, we were offered red and white wine, and you said, what about orange wine? And everyone looked a bit confused. But it's a thing, apparently. It is a thing. It's maybe a little bit... Uh, Sini. Um, my understanding is, I think it's uh, the same grapes uh, as white wine is made or, uh, made from, but the skins are kept on. So mm. it um, it tends to be made in smaller batches, biodynamic, organic, uh, and mm. I certainly think that gives you uh, uh, a lower risk of a hangover. <laughs> uh, no, basically, Lucy, <laughs> now you're talking. This is hipster wine, isn't it? Let's let's call uh. let's call this what it is. You're it's, a hipster. It's, it's hipster it, wine. It, I'm not a hipster, Stig, but it is hipster wine. My my excuse is. I was brought up in the wilds of Wiltshire where cider was the thing. So this is the more sophisticated mm. uh, yet still juicy equivalent uh, for, the, for, the, for the wine drinker in your life. Well, I feel like I've learned something. I feel like I'm not convinced at all by that. No. She's just a, Thank just, you, Lucy. Yeah, hipster's choices there at, <laughs> at lunch with us. But at least if it's Times Radio's chief commentator and wine expert, yeah. evidently. There you go. Get her on wine time.